Hey everyone, welcome back to our Harkla YouTube channel. We're so happy to have you. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. We're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today we're gonna show you one fun activity for each sensory system. I have a lot to say on the topic. I know you do. <laughs> Before we jump into today's topic, we just want to give you a quick heads up that it is Sensory Processing Disorder Awareness Month, and we are so excited to celebrate by sharing our new, kind of new, sensory diet course with you. This digital course teaches you all about sensory processing, sensory processing disorder, and it teaches you how to create a unique, personalized sensory diet routine that can help your child feel more successful throughout the day. If you are watching right now in October, it is on sale. We're gonna put all of the details and links in the description below, so make sure you check it out. But if you're watching this later on, just know that you can go to those links and you can check it out. And we do include AOTA CEUs now, so if you are an occupational therapist or an occupational therapy assistant, you do get continuing education units. All right, now let's jump into the video and talk about sensory processing and the different sensory systems. Did you know that you actually have eight senses? Not just the typical five that you learn about in elementary school, you actually have three hidden senses. And personally, I feel like these are some of the most important senses for overall regulation. Those three senses are proprioception, vestibular, and interoception. We're not gonna dive super deep into them today, but just know that they're there, and we have YouTube videos on every single of the eight senses that we'll link in the description so you can learn more about each of them. These three hidden senses, these are kind of your near senses. These tell you what's going on with your body, your position in space, your movement, your arousal level, your emotions, really what's happening inside of your body. And the other five senses, those are kind of your far senses. They tell you what's going on in your environment. What do you see? What do you hear? Are you safe? And so that's a really important factor to think about when we're, when we're talking about these activities that we're going to share about, these specific one activity for each of these senses. It's very important to know that we all have a sensory system. We all have sensory preferences. We all prefer specific sensory activities. So when we're giving you these sensory activities today, keep that in mind. Keep in mind that your child might like some of these activities more than others, but they're all beneficial. We want to incorporate as many sensory activities throughout the day as possible to just have a well-rounded sensory system. You know what else is interesting is that some people don't have to think twice about their sensory system modulating the input. They can, they can go outside, they can go to school, and they don't really have to worry about regulating their sensory system. Whereas some people, they can't not think about it. They can't even leave the house without thinking about people bumping into them or the loud noises or just too many bright lights in the environment that they're gonna be in. And, and it's on the forefront of, of their brain. They're kind of in that fight or flight mode. So some people, easy peasy, you don't have to think twice. And some people, it takes a lot of not only mental energy, emotional energy, even physical energy to just function day to day. We do have more information on this. We have a specific YouTube video all about sensory processing disorder, which is also called SPD. We'll link that in the description below because it's definitely important to learn more about that if you or your child is struggling with sensory processing and it's affecting your ability to get through your day. So if you are an adult watching this video, if you are a parent of a sensory kiddo, if you are a therapist working with sensational kiddos, if you are a teacher and you have a couple of you know kids who are a little quirky in their sensory needs, definitely incorporate some of these activities that we're gonna talk about. They are beneficial for everyone, not just someone who has sensory differences or a diagnosis of anything. All right, our first activity is going to target the visual system. Now, it's important to know that our visual system is not how well we see. It's not visual acuity. Instead, it's how we see the world and how our brain interprets and processes everything we see. So our activity for the visual system is called infinity loop tracing. Infinity loop tracing is really cool because it works on that, you know, that lazy eight. You take your eight and then you lay it down on its side so it looks like an infinity loop. And there's so many different ways that you can modify this activity. The first way we're gonna have you try is to put a large infinity loop on the wall. You can do this on butcher paper, you can draw it, you can do painter's tape on the wall. 
and you're going to just start by tracing it with your fingers and you're going to go um, you're going to start by going up to the left and then around and then you're going to do that a few times cross the midline and then you're going to go in the opposite direction and then once you've done that a couple of times you're going to switch and do your opposite hand or your non-dominant hand go in that first direction going up to the left and then you're going to switch directions again so you'll do it four times and you're going to follow your finger each time you are tracing that infinity loop yep this is really great to target that visual system we're also targeting a lot of visual tracking and ocular motor skills here we're crossing midline which is great to get both sides of the brain firing now if you can't do this on the wall with a large piece of paper or painter's tape you can just do it on a regular sized piece of paper just make sure that the infinity loop is at eye level and placed at the midline of the body so you're crossing midline another thing that i like to do is to write letters or numbers or shapes or or put dots of colors along the infinity loop and have the child call out the items that are on the infinity loop as they trace the infinity loop. And this really helps with some more cognitive processing and processing speed as well. The next activity for our tactile system is a sensory bin. You know sensory bins are all the rage right now. They're super popular, which is great as occupational therapy assistants. We love seeing that. But we always like to take sensory bins to the next level. How can we make them more functional? So one way that you can do that is to incorporate a cognitive task. So maybe we throw letters in the sensory bin full of rice. And then maybe we're gonna put a couple of drops of essential oils in the rice to activate that olfactory system as well. So what we're gonna do is find those letters. You can do it with your eyes. You can put a blindfold on and close your eyes and find a letter. Maybe try to identify the letter based on touch and feel. And then maybe come up with a word that the letter starts with. So if they pick a B out and then they feel that it's a B, they say, okay, B starts with ball. And then while their eyes are still closed, you can draw that letter in the rice or you can draw it in the air, get a little bit more of that kinesthetic feedback. So just with this one activity, we're, target, we're targeting so many different skills simultaneously. The next one is for the auditory system. Now, the auditory system is not how well you hear, instead it's how your brain processes and interprets what you hear in order for you to follow auditory instructions or hold a conversation in a busy environment and our activity for this is metronome clapping we love the metronome we'll turn it on at 60 beats per minute so it's just a really smooth calm rhythm and you can get a free metronome on YouTube or I use Spotify with my Spotify That's account a good idea. yeah, yeah. So just start with it at 60 beats per minute and practice clapping on every beat. This really challenges the auditory system to focus on that beat and complete a motor movement with it. Once your child has successfully completed clapping on every beat, we try to go for about 30 consecutive seconds, you can incorporate other activities with the metronome like jumping jacks or we like to do bear crawls with the metronome. You can grab a visual chart and include a visual component with this and read the visual chart on every beat. You can increase the speed of the metronome to 120 beats per minute and practice doing it on every other beat. So there's a lot of different ways to do this activity that is great for targeting the auditory system. We do actually have a separate multi-sensory processing course that runs through 30 different activities that you can do with a metronome plus a couple of other supplies. We'll link that in the description as well. The next sense that we're gonna talk about is the gustatory or your sense of taste and the activity we love doing with this one is sour, sour spray or candy spray. So we have two different brands that we'll use. One is called Two Tarts, and that one is a little bit sweeter. It's not as sour, but we notice that it doesn't have as many yucky ingredients in it. Um, and the other one is the Warheads Sour Spray. And this one does have the food dye, which we do try to avoid, but it's a very limited, minimal amount. So just keep that in mind if your child is sensitive or if you are sensitive yourself. So the Warheads is a little bit more sour, Two Tarts is a little less sour. And what you can do with this one is just a squirt on the tongue, a squirt on the finger, in the mouth, and it just helps to wake up that oral system. It's very alerting. It, uh, if you think about when, you, um, when you're about to get something sour in your mouth, your mouth starts to salivate and you start to get prepared. 
And really how sour, how big of your response and how much you salivate is connected to how sensitive you are to sensory input. So for someone who salivates a lot, that means they're more of a seeker. And for someone who doesn't salivate as much, they're a little bit more on that avoidant side. So just a fun fact, something interesting to think about, but sour spray is a great thing to use before meals, before maybe a non-preferred task, maybe after a non-preferred task, just you know, as a little sweet treat throughout the day, you can really modify it for when you or your your child need um, just a little pick me up because it is very alerting to that nervous system. The next one is the olfactory sense and this is your sense of smell and our favorite activity for this is to use an essential oil scrunchie. So you're just going to go to the store, buy one of those scrunchies, put a drop or two of essential oils on it and wear it around your wrist as a bracelet. With essential oils, you wanna make sure that you're using a therapeutic grade. You wanna make sure it's a very clean brand. The brand that I use normally is doTERRA and I'll use something like vetiver or Balance or cedar wood for very calming, grounding scents. Things like wild orange or bergamot or peppermint, those are very alerting. So you wanna think about the different scents that you're using. These are also great for increasing neurotransmitters, and that's a whole different a whole different topic that we can talk about on another day, but there is research that supports that. And if you use those, um, what's the word, the fruity, the fruity scents, the citrus. If you use the citrus scents, there is research that supports increased stem cell production. And so that's a really cool thing that you can incorporate as well. Essential oils, scents, the olfactory system, really, really powerful scents. One quick tip is that less is more. So when you're incorporating these essential oils, start with one drop, maybe two, but definitely don't do more than that, especially when you're starting out because it can be overpowering and you really don't need a lot to get positive effects. The nice thing about the scented scrunchie is that you can take it off if you if it's too much or if your child's like whoa this is this isn't my thing whereas if you put it on the body it's a little bit harder to get that off so you just pop off that scented scrunchie when you're feeling good and you can pop it back on if you need a little refresh all right the next one is for the vestibular system this is one of my favorites this is one of those hidden senses and we have receptors in our inner ear that anytime our head moves and we have a head position change it activates our vestibular system tells us where our body is, it affects muscle tone and balance. And one of our favorite activities is called the windmill. So you're gonna start by standing with your feet apart and your arms out to your sides. You're gonna look up at the ceiling and then you're gonna bend down and look down at your toes while you simultaneously touch one hand to your opposite foot. Then return back to your starting position, looking up at the ceiling, go back down, touch your other hand to your other opposite foot, and then go back up to the start. That's one rep of the windmill. Keep in mind, this is a very alerting activity. So if you have a child or if you yourself are sensitive to movement or you get motion sickness easily, take it slow, do just a couple of reps, and then follow it up with some heavy work. Speaking of heavy work, that is our next sense that we're gonna talk about, your proprioceptive system. It's the very all grounding, all calming sensory system here. We wanna keep in mind that once you do a vestibular activity, it's important to follow that with that proprioceptive or that heavy work activity to help rule out and kind of avoid that sensory overstimulation. So our proprioceptive system, we're going to do an activity called the steamroller, which does require two people. So you're gonna have the child lay on the ground and you're gonna take a therapy ball or a yoga ball and you're gonna roll it over their back, over their legs, over their arms, avoid their head, and you're gonna let them identify how much pressure they want. So you can say, do you want me to push harder or softer? And they can tell you. And if they want more, 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 you know that they're kind of craving that deep pressure input. If they're like, oh no, no, ow, 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 tells you they're a little bit more sensitive, maybe they're avoidant of some of that tactile deep pressure input as well. So it's very calming, very grounding. If you don't have a partner, you can always lay under something like a weighted blanket or um, you know, a bean bag and you can have them lay under a bean bag. Um, just make sure that we're not leaving them there, that we're always using supervision, that we are you know, hands-on at all times, safety first. You know, Use your best disclaimer. <laughs> Use your best judgment. Exactly. So when in doubt, probe it out. Really beneficial. Our last one is the interoceptive system. And this is really your internal awareness of your body. So how is your body feeling in each moment? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? 
Do you need to go to the bathroom? Are you feeling nervous or anxious or scared? And it also relates to our emotions. How are you feeling emotionally? Are you feeling happy or sad or like I mentioned, anxious? And how does it make your body feel? Does it make you feel sweaty or shaky? So really it's understanding all of those processes throughout your body. And our favorite activity is to identify emotions with different activities. So you can do this while you're doing all of the other activities we've already shown you. You can start identifying how it makes you feel, how it makes your child feel. Does this activity help you feel calm or does it make you feel silly? Does this activity make you feel happy or does it make you feel bored? And you can really start identifying those internal feelings and emotions with different sensory activities to help with emotional intelligence and awareness. If you are dying to learn more about each of these senses, and we do have videos on each separate sense, we'll link those in the description as well. And if you are looking to learn more about creating a sensory diet for either yourself or your child or your clients, we highly recommend checking out our sensory diet course. We'll link that in the, in the description as well. It is on sale, so if you're watching this in October for Sensory Processing Disorder Awareness Month, make sure that you check that out. If you liked this video, make sure you like it, leave us a comment about what your favorite activity was, and make sure you subscribe to our video so you never miss a new one. We do have a podcast as well with over 250 episodes. We talk about really unique topics as well as just sensory integration as well. It's called All Things Sensory, and you can find it on all major podcast platforms. Make sure you're following us on social media. We're at Harkla underscore family, as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. With that, we will plan on seeing you next week. We always drop a new video on Tuesdays. You can't mute this shit right here. I don't want to mute you. <laughs>